Here I'm going to show basically the things that I do to service one of these Numicron clock movements. I already took a few things apart to save a little bit of time. The first thing I do, of course, is remove the electric motor. And most of them, there'll be a hole. This one's now covered with tape. Sometimes a hole is just punched and you need to uh, enlarge it a little bit. Which, I use this awe very carefully. You don't want to stick it in there too far and damage the gears inside. And then I'll put two or three good squirts of like three in one oil in there. Stand the motor up in this position and run it for a while. And then lay it down and run it for a while. And then turn it the other way and let some of the oil come back out. Also, you want to remove this thing off the back and make sure that oil doesn't get in there. On some of them, I've put a small weep hole to allow the oil out of the, so it doesn't interfere with the flywheel. Because they're not really meant to be full of oil all the time. It'll eventually just leak out and make a mess. The other issue with these are these, like, clip things. These are what hold the, uh clock in place the numbers in position and of course that's the part that wears out especially the one for the minutes these I've soldered another copper piece on top to reinforce them and also to give them longer life and then what I usually do is the one that's for the minutes ends up becoming for the hours and the one from the hours becomes the minutes then I take it apart. This first one you have to loosen and release the clip and then you can pull this axle bolt which I've already unscrewed. Be sure that this clip is freed up so you don't break it. Again they're priceless. They cannot be replaced. Remove the hours drum. In this case it's a 24 hour version. That gives you the access to the clip that holds the tents. On most of them I also remove the minutes wheel as well and clean that real good. See the old dried up grease on the inside of the uh, drum where the little brush rubs all the time dried up and of course then the brush started to wear out. Luckily not all the way and I was able to repair it. These actually have a real axle inside. I put a couple drops of oil on that and put it back inside the hours one. This one I usually just turn it on its side and put a few drops of oil in there and it runs across and this one I'll take out and oil the axle and clean it real good. Then what I use is I use a little bit of grease to protect these from wearing out and if I can set this down, I'll kind of demonstrate how I do this. Of course, greasing is always a pain, but it's very necessary to protect. These go on a grease gun to grease wheel fittings and stuff on a lawnmower or car. So I, this is like a lithium grease. And take that with a screwdriver and just put a little bit on each nub. As little as you can really. You don't need much. Just like that all the way around. And then when these rub along here they won't wear through. But that's really the only issues with these are these things wearing out and the motors. And these motors were made by some outside outfit that made motors for just about everything. They're all pretty much the same. But yet, it's very hard to get replacements. And these things run quite hot too. Most of them you can't hold on to this with your finger like this after the clock's been on for an hour. 
if anybody has any suggestions of just how hot these things should get but every one that I have it they get so hot that you just can't hold on to them and they so they got to be at least at least 180 200 degrees and they run for years on end they also use the same gearbox and motor set up in intermatic time switches which they still make so they may be a possible retrofit if you can get the plastic piece to attach on the intermatic they got it coming out the opposite side so you'd have to be able to pull the shaft and reverse it so it comes out this side I imagine some turn counterclockwise and some turn clockwise as well but I'm sure that some place you can still get these somehow there used to be a place called Glenwood Sales on Hague Street in the city that used to have stacks of those in just about any configuration that you could imagine but they've gone out of business but back to the clock of course we reverse these now the one for the hours is opposite so you can't use that one but you can swap these two so that the one that's more worn out gets less use and once you put your clock all back together and everything's lubricated you'll want to very carefully clean the actual things without rubbing the paint off and yes this is a radioactive bezel or very possibly is although it does have to be charged to glow it doesn't glow if you leave it in the dark for 24 hours it will go dead but if I charge it in front of the light fixture turn the light off the bezel does indeed glow so you want to be reasonably careful because this stuff can be poisonous and they did use radioactive paint in the olden days and this is a 1962 so it's not that old but some of these numicrons go back to 1936 which in closing I can show you the original 1930 36 patent or 1935 it was patented by F.A. Greenwald filed March 10th 1935 this was the original Numicron movement you look real close you can see it they actually used a different type of motor on here it has a motor like in a record player with the shaft and the bar going across and the coil back here and I'm trying to buy a 1930s Numicron now and thinking that it's gonna have a motor like the Sessions clock had that looks like that which is a lot less accurate in keeping time this looks like the motor that's in the patent drawing with the bar going across and the armature of course this is the one from my mom's clock that's worn out and I'd like to take and have this rebuilt but it's a non-synchronous motor and probably not as accurate as this style which is what it has now and we can thank this clock for the replacement motor that I was able to get so yeah the parts that rub need a little bit of grease the parts that turn need a little bit of oil and if you have the glow in the dark parts be a little careful with them don't chip them, don't sand them, don't try to grind on them or do anything. Just very carefully clean them and leave them alone. They still work. They're, as far as I know, they're perfectly safe. 
once, especially once they're back in the cabinet. They can't be damaged in any way. And there isn't enough radiation there that's going to hurt anything, especially after all these years. So there's a Nomicron that's being serviced and, and restored. The Nomicrons.